This show is produced by the Harwood Podcast Network. Hi, I'm Cindy Harris, and we love making this show available to you free of charge. If you'd like to help us keep it that way, please make a contribution to our Karma Jar. For more information, visit our website. Today I'm baking these delicious chocolate chip biscotti. Biscotti is an Italian cookie and it's actually twice baked so you get a wonderful rich and crunchy flavor and these cookies are delicious dipped in hot coffee. Now making biscotti is a lot different than making drop cookies and the reason being is we actually bake the cookie two times and that's what gives it that really really crunchy um, consistency that you can dip in coffee or espresso. So to do that we've got to first bake the large pieces of dough and to do that we're going to need two of our baking sheets each lined with a piece of parchment. And then I'm just gonna set these to the side and we're gonna get our dry ingredients ready. We'll start by measuring out our flour. So I'm gonna lighten it up. And the reason I do that is because it's been sitting in the canister for a while, it'll start to settle. And I wanna kinda of get a little bit of air into it. So I'll dip and level two cups of flour into my bowl here along with one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Now do make sure that you check your baking powder's expiration date. If it's getting too close or if it's expired, the chemicals in the baking powder aren't gonna react properly and your baked goods won't rise. So you need to always make sure that you're using fresh baking powder. And an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. And with my little whisk, I'm gonna whisk those ingredients together. I wanna make sure that that baking powder and salt gets mixed throughout the flour. And then I'm gonna set that aside. Now I'm gonna combine my butter and my sugar together. And as you can see, I have my new glass mixing bowl, which I think is so great because now you can see what's going on in the bowl with me. And I have to tell you, if you have a setup like this at home, getting one of these paddles that has this rubber edge to it is really great because I find that I don't have to scrape down the bowl hardly at all, which is really nice. So if you are um, using just a regular um, standing mixer or your hand mixer, either one is fine. You may need to stop and scrape down the sides of the bowl if you see butter or flour or whatever ingredients kind of flung on the side of the bowl. I find with this paddle it doesn't happen, so I probably won't mention it to you, but that's something that you should be looking for when you're doing your own baked goods. Now I've got half a cup of butter that I just took out of the refrigerator and I'm gonna cut it into some cubes and put that into my bowl. Now I'm gonna be using two kinds of sugar along with my butter, a half a cup of white sugar, and then I am gonna put in half a cup of brown sugar. And I'm gonna let this beat up until it's nice and fluffy. I'm gonna lower the speed, and I have two eggs, and I'm gonna drop them in one at a time. And then I'm gonna pop the speed up to medium and I'm gonna let this spin for two minutes. I want this mixture to get nice and fluffy now too. I'm gonna to turn the mixture off. I'm gonna get my flour. Before I put that in there, I've got a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips that I'm gonna put in, along with a cup of walnuts. Now these are not a super fine walnut. Normally biscotti has almonds in it or sometimes pistachios, but because of the chocolate chip, I like the walnut, but I do want the pieces to be on the larger side. So I have one cup, and then I'll use my whisk and kind of bring those together, mixing them into the flour. And then I'm gonna raise my bowl. I'm gonna pour this whole thing of dry ingredients right in. And I'm gonna mix this, but only until it starts to come together. I don't wanna overbeat it. And you see, that's about it, only about 30 seconds. And I do wanna take my spatula and do a final mix, make sure there's no pockets of flour or anything. Now I've got my baking sheets. I'm gonna divide the dough in half. I'm gonna put half in the center of this sheet and half in the center of the second sheet. Now I'm gonna shape this into our log. So I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on my hands 
and just sprinkle a little on top. And I have a ruler here because I want the log to be about three inches wide. And as I pat, I'm gonna squeeze in the sides because I want this to be about three quarters of an inch thick. Do you wanna make sure that it's nice and even across the top? So this ends up being three by about nine inches long, and again, about three quarters of an inch high. I'm gonna do the same thing with the second log. Now we're gonna start with the first baking of these cookies. Now I'm gonna bake these one at a time. So I'm going to put one in the oven at 325, and I'm gonna let that bake for 25 minutes. And then the second one, I'm just gonna put in the refrigerator. Uh, it's very warm here today, and I don't want the dough to get too soft, so I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator, and then I'll pop it in for um, 25 minutes once I take the first one out. So because we're using a lower temperature and for 25 minutes these are really going to start to dry out and get crunchy but again this is just the first baking. Now here's the first one I'm going to pull it off the rack. Now you can see it gets nice and golden brown. You can see it spreads a little bit that's why we can only do half of the dough on a sheet at a time. Now we want to let this biscotti cool before we start slicing it. So you can let this sit here um, while the other one is baking or you can let it sit overnight. It's totally up to you. Today I'm just going to let it sit here while the other one's baking. Now as you can see the second one has come out of the oven so I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this one. So I'm going to take and my big spatula and I'm going to remove it from my parchment and set it on my cutting board. Now I'm gonna take my parchment and flip it over. Um, my pan is nice and cool now, and uh, if you wanna use a fresh piece of parchment, you can, but I'm just gonna reuse this one. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these on the diagonal in about half inch slices. Then we're gonna take the edges you can nibble, and we're gonna turn these on their sides and place them back on the baking sheet. Now these aren't going to spread anymore so you can get them kind of close together. Now we're going to take and put these back into our 325 degree oven for 10 minutes. Now while the biscotti is cooling and baking, I wanted to take a moment and tell you about Cindy's Kitchen Cookbook, which is my online interactive cookbook that you can subscribe to. What I've done is I've basically taken all of my recipes plus a bunch more from my private recipe collection and added them online so that you can access them. You can either search by ingredients like let's say um, you have some asparagus that you got on hand and you want to see what you can do with them. You can search by asparagus and all the recipes that I have using asparagus pop-up and uh, you can click to them and they go not only to the recipe but if I've made a video for them you get to see that. You can also search by what kind of dish, like let's say you're needing a dessert or you're needing some kind of main dish or appetizer, you can search by that. Again, it'll take you to the recipe or to the video. And then if you're into gardening like I am and you wanna grow some of your own ingredients, I have by season um, how you go about not only growing, but harvesting, and then the recipes you can use for the things that you harvest. So Cindy's Kitchen Cookbook, it's a wonderful interactive uh, recipe book that is constantly being updated, so check that out. I've also put my premium videos in Cindy's Cooking School on sale for 99 cents each. So if you wanna learn how to make these beautiful cream puff swans or you'd like sort of a more in-depth cake decorating lesson, these are the videos for you. And all of this can be found at our website, so check it out there. Now it's been 10 minutes, but we're not quite done yet. I'm gonna take my spatula, and you can see they've gotten nice and crispy. Now I'm going to turn them, and we wanna crisp up the other side. So I'm just gonna rotate them like this. But it's this double baking that gives these biscotti their great crunch. And then these will go back in for another 10 minutes. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take my second cookie log, pull it off onto my board, flip my parchment over, 
and then go ahead and cut these in a diagonal. Just put the ends to the side and then lay those out. And that way when this first tray comes out, I'll have the second tray ready to go and uh, put them in for their second baking. Now this is the second 10 minutes. And as you can see, these have gotten much browner, which is perfect. Now that I have these out, I'm gonna go ahead and bake the second one off. So again, 10 minutes, flip them over, and then another 10 minutes and they'll look just like this. Now I wanna let the biscotti cool for at least 20 minutes on the rack. I need to be able to handle them easily and have them be nice and solid. And then if you want to, I'll show you um, a couple of ways to dress them up with some chocolate. Now you can see it's been about 20 minutes. These are nice and solid. They're easy to handle. So I'm gonna put a little bit of chocolate on them. But because it's very warm here today, I'm gonna pop them in the refrigerator once I get the chocolate on them to help them set up. So I've got a rimmed baking sheet. I'm just gonna pick up and slide those right on top. And because they're nice and cool, this isn't a problem. Now I'm gonna melt my chocolate, so I have a glass dish, and this isn't an exact science, but I'm gonna start with about three quarters of a cup of the semi-sweet chocolate chips. I'm gonna put these in the bowl, and I'm gonna microwave them on 30-second bursts, but do make sure that you stir it each time until the chocolate is nice and melted. Now the chocolate is nice and smooth and melted, and I've got all the biscotti with one of the flat sides up. So here's two different ways that you can add the chocolate. One is if you want to coat one side. So what I do is I just take my spoon and I just sort of paint the chocolate on the back. Now if you wanted to, you could um, melt the chocolate, put the melted chocolate on a plate and uh, dip it if you want, but I find this to be nice and easy to do. Now one of the things that's great about doing this is that um, when you bite into it, you have that great chocolate um, bottom, which is kind of a nice surprise if you're not expecting it. Then the other thing you can do is just take the melted chocolate and just drizzle it back and forth on the top. This just gives an, just a little bit of interest, just a little bit of added chocolate, um, but it kind of dresses it up just a little bit. Now, if you want, you can leave some of the biscotti plain. Some of them have the chocolate on the bottom, and then some of them have the chocolate drizzle, and that makes kind of a nice variety. Now, I'm going to put these in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes because I want that chocolate to set up. Now when they come out of the refrigerator, touch them, make sure that it, the chocolate is totally solid. As promised, I'm gonna try just a bite of the biscotti and I'm gonna break it so you can see just how crunchy it is, which is perfect. Now they're not so hard that you would break a tooth, so that's good. But one of the things I really love about these is I love the nut flavor that runs throughout them. And because we've used the walnut, it's got a really nice walnut flavor. And with them being baked twice, it really toasts those nuts and you get this really rich nut flavor, which is fantastic. Now these are not really, really sweet. So it's not like you're just eating a really hard chocolate chip cookie. They have a, a much more developed flavor than a chocolate chip cookie, like I said, because of the way it's been, those nuts have been toasted. It really brings out that walnut flavor. And then these are ready to either give us gifts or store. And as a matter of fact, I got an email um, from one of my VFFs asking if I would show some ways to package some of the baked goods that I make. And um, you can imagine, because I've made so, done so many podcasts, I give away tons of cookies and cupcakes and all sorts of things. So I will share um, some of my simple things that I do with you for giving gifts. And this first one is really easy. You just get one of these clear cellophane bags. Here in the States, they sell them like at um, party stores or craft stores. And then for this, I would just take one of each of the kinds. So this is one with the drizzle of chocolate. Here's one with the chocolate just on the bottom and then a plain one. Put that right in the bag. And then I always have some of this natural raffia on hand, uh, but you could use ribbon if you want. And I'm just gonna take and tie that in a bow right at the very top. 
like this. And then I'll make a little loop. And then this is a little too long, so I'll just gather that up. Then I'll just tie that off. And this is great um, to give as a gift to someone. Now that you've learned the basic biscotti technique, I have a zillion different variations that I can share with you. And they're wonderful throughout the year, again, to give as gifts to friends and family. Now, if you want to try these chocolate chip biscotti at home, just go to our website, go to the cookie jar show notes page, and I'll have the recipe there for you. If you do make them, please send me a photo so I can send you the cookie badge. Don't forget to join us on Facebook. And as always, if you have any questions or ideas for me, please send me an email. I'll see you next time.